the first thing I want to talk about today is different categories of productivity applications. There are a number of these that I have seen over the last few years, and there are some emerging categories that I think are interesting to talk about. I did an article about this a long time ago. Let me see if I can pull it up. It was more of a community post a couple of, well, it was a year ago now, thinking about different categories of task managers. This was an interesting slant on it. I don't think it's fully accurate. I don't fully agree with it right now. but. A few that I picked were analog-based task managers, things like the bullet journal and different methodologies you can use on paper, list managers like reminders and Google Tasks. The reminders has been getting a number of updates in the last couple of years from Apple where it could be really a basic productivity contender for a lot of people. You can tag, you can set different lists, you can have smart lists. It's really an interesting category or class of application now. It lies in between something like Todoist and something like Google Tasks or Remember the Milk. Then there's the project manager level, which I don't agree with this classification. OmniFocus, things in Todoist are not project managers in my mind anymore. We'll get to that in just a second. You have collaborative task managers like Asana or ClickUp. I agree with that. And then PKM managers like Obsidian, Rome, and Notion. So I've drawn up this simple diagram in Miro to symbolize what I think the categories of task managers or productivity tools are falling into at this point in time. Up at the top, we have your traditional task manager. And this is the difference that I have seen or mentally for me is that OmniFocus, Things3, Todoist, these all fall in the task manager bucket. OmniFocus is not a project manager in my mind. You can manage projects in it, but a project manager we'll get into in just a moment is something a little bit broader and bigger than that. But these are your typical task managers. You can put a task in, you can check it, you can schedule dates, you can organize them into different folders or projects or whatever way works best for you. This has been the most long-standing category of productivity application out there, starting ages ago with uh, Omni Outliner, Kinklist GTD, and a number of other apps at the beginning of the 2000s, especially with the getting things done productivity revolution that happened around then. But then another category that we have here is project managers. This is where I think the distinction becomes a little bit clearer in my mind. A to-do or a task manager is something that helps you manage your own personal life a little bit better. It's more granularly focused. It's much on a smaller scale. Project managers, I think, have two distinctive qualities about them. One is that they're designed for big picture management. There are tons of projects you can have in there. There can be a very high level overview of work happening and a very detailed level of work. And two, project managers tend to be focused and built around collaboration. So Asana, very much a team-oriented project management tool, Monday, Taskade. ClickUp is an interesting one too. It's very much a team-oriented tool, but it also has a number of tools built into it, like documents and a whiteboard similar to Miro. And so there's a lot of features where you can start to build project management workflows directly inside of one platform here. Whereas looking at task managers, you're not going to be building out documentation inside of OmniFocus. It's really difficult to do templating. Things is great for having a, a defined and opinionated way to approach scheduling and organizing your tasks, but it doesn't really do a great job of handling the big picture overviews very well, or even putting objectives inside of there. You can hack around it, of course, but to me, a project manager is something that can handle a lot of the big picture and it's designed to work collaboratively. Next, we have PKM apps, and I intentionally split out notes apps here. We'll get into those in just a second. But PKM apps are obviously personal knowledge managers. Obsidian, Rome, RevNote. I duplicated RevNote here. We'll get that out of the way. Notion, I would consider to be one of them. 
Sometimes people use PKM apps for their entire productivity tool stack. And I think there are some advantages to doing that. Number one being it's all in one tool. This is the case that August Bradley makes with his Notion life operating system, his PPV methodology. Because when you have it all in one tool, information can bubble up in places at the right time. Whereas if you have reference materials in a notes app and then your tasks in a task manager and you have other stuff in a project manager and your planning tools over here of your day-to-day -day planning, it can get a little disparate and can be very difficult to integrate it all. I know this is one of the challenges that I ran into five or six years ago when managing my notes inside of Bear and then having tasks inside of OmniFocus is how do I make sense of all of it? It's not under one roof. So people can use PKM apps to build a sort of productivity system. This is the other challenge that I've seen that PKM apps can actually excel at too, is having the high level guidance principles of your life embedded right in there. So not just the principles, but objectives, things of that sort. Task managers are really good at executing, but they're not really good at seeing the big picture of your life, your objectives, goals, tracking those. PKM apps can be bent usually, and they're fairly malleable to track those things in a unified place. We'll talk about notes for a second because I did want to distinctly define notes apps as different from PKM apps. Why? Because PKM apps are built around collecting all sorts of information and putting it in one place and connecting it together in meaningful ways. Obsidian and Rome are really built around the networked thought concept. Notion is built around the structured thought concept. Notes apps are really good at capturing information, storing it there, and bring it back to refer back to it. So Evernote is awesome for this. This has been around for ages now. Apple Notes and Bear are a couple of other contenders in this category. But they're not really great at linking information together. You're not going to put a bunch of high level structure inside of these apps. And this is in fact, I think one of the reasons why I struggled with Evernote is because I wanted features like Obsidian and Rome have to bring some high level connection and structure, but Evernote just didn't really have that. Bear actually had some wiki linking support, which is pretty great. It just didn't have the knowledge graph and the backlinking. I think Bear had a lot of potential about four years ago, but unfortunately the development pace really slowed down and I haven't really seen too much about that app. So yeah, there notes is a separate category of a productivity app in my mind, but it has a specific use case. It's really good for storing information, referring back to it, and even maybe sharing it out with someone else. The newest category of apps that I've started to see is a planner style app. Some folks would see these more as calendaring. I don't really see calendaring too much as part of a productivity stack, though there are tons of calendar apps. What the real value a calendaring app should bring is the ability to plan. Sunsama, I think, is probably the gold standard from what I have seen in this because it allows you to integrate so many different applications, such as Todoist, ClickUp, Asana, you can pull tasks and things you need to do into one view here and then schedule them in a way. So where project managers and task managers really excel is the ability to organize structured information, things that you need to get done. They don't do day-to-day -day planning all that well or even week-to-week -week planning. It can be difficult. You can, Obviously, you can schedule dates inside of Todoists. You can schedule dates in Asana, ClickUp. But to actually plan when you're gonna do something, how you're going to do it, this is where these planning apps really excel. As I mentioned, Sansama, there's AkiFlow. Uh, Morgan is another one. It's more of a calendar app than it is a planner, but it does have some of the planning features that Sansama and AkiFlow have. Reclaim AI is also another interesting one. And then I threw Bento, Keep Productive's app, Francesco D'Alessio's app in here, because while it's not a calendaring app, it is centered around working with other tools that contain your things to do. And then this is the place that you plan your day. And then you work off of this list. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you're interested in checking out Bento, definitely recommend doing it. I 
have to applaud Francesco and his effort in building this app. It's been actually quite successful. And so I'm, I think it's a great choice, especially if you want to really hone in on what tasks that you're working on. I did a video on it. I did a first look. I will say I recorded this video in a hotel room <laughs> while I was traveling for work. So if you want to check out my first look at Bento on launch day, do have a look at that app or that video.